Hi, my name is Ron Dorn, and the purpose of this short video is to give you an intuitive feel, what I call back of napkin calculations, for you figuring out the rate of deepening of the Grand Canyon and the widening of the Grand Canyon. The idea is for you to watch this before you jump in and try and make the calculations, because I'm a believer that if you have a good sense at an intuitive level for what the answer should be, in a ballpark, then you're much better off in actually doing the calculations. It's kind of like doing the mental math when you go in the grocery store. You sort of calculate how much you're spending along the way, and then you know whether or not it's in the ballpark of what you expected in the checkout line, or when you get an Instacart shipment, if you can afford to be able to do that in times of COVID-19. So I'm gonna go straight to screen sharing, and show you the Grand Canyon topography and rock type video game with the avatar in its landing position. And I'm using the mouse to scroll back and give an overhead, an overall view. So I'm gonna use fast travel key points or the fast travel locations in the fast travel menu to help with the calculations and help you understand. I'm gonna start out going to the um, inner gorge or the Grand Granite Gorge. So I jump there and you can see where I am on the inset map. I'm deep down near the bottom of the Grand Canyon. I close out the view. I hit escape so I can have control over the video game environment. And there's the rabbit. So I'm going to run the rabbit. Let me see if I can get him through the maze here. Notice that the inner gorge is extremely steep. It's because the rock types are very hard. You're in very old rock types like schist and granite. It's unweathered and it makes a very steep inner gorge. I'm running the rabbit down to the center of the heart of the Grand Canyon where the Colorado River is crossed when you go, say, rim to rim, if you're trying to go from the north rim to the south rim. So I am now looking out in the view, looking kind of northeast. This is the rabbit down here at the Colorado River, and I'm looking up this straight shot canyon, up this straight shot canyon, which is Bright Angel Canyon. It's straight because there's a fault. It's a very old fault. And so the fault means that there's crushed rocks and the crushed rocks are easier to erode down. So a tributary stream, Bright Angel Creek, is eroding down using the weaknesses of the fault zone to make a nice straight canyon. So let's make a note of the elevation of the Colorado River down at the bottom of the canyon. We're gonna need that for making calculations. It's at 721 meters. So I'm going to in Microsoft Word, so you can see it, type in 721 meters, Colorado River, bottom of the Grand Canyon. Okay, so what I'm gonna try and do now is get the elevation of the rim on the north rim and the south rim to help you make the calculation of how fast the Colorado River is cutting down. To do this, I'm going to use fast travel. And I'm going to jump straight up using fast travel using the inset map. So I'm going to zoom in on the inset map. And I'm going to click, I want to know the elevation of the south rim at the top of this canyon that you walk up and around using the Bright Angel Trail if you do that. So I'm clicking up on the south rim, click on fast travel and boom. I'm looking northeast. And this is the fault zone that the creeks are using to cut down tributary streams. I'm up on the south rim and I'm making a note that the south rim 
is 2131 meters in elevation. Now, when you actually play the game, if you have a small laptop, I recommend that you take notes using a piece of paper. I think it's much easier. It ends up being really complicated to try and do that on your laptop when there's a teeny tiny small, small screen. Now I'm gonna jump up and get the elevation at the top of the North Rim Canyon. So I hit escape so I can get access to this menu. I'm clicking on fast travel. There's the inset map in the fast travel view. And I'm gonna click way up here on the North Rim. Click fast travel. And there's the Bright Angel Creek making a straight line canyon. I'm up on the North Rim. And the elevation is 2611 meters. Right, now I have all the information I need to calculate the rate of incision except for how long it took. You're told in the PDF files and in the instructions that the Grand Canyon started to be cut about 5 million years ago, probably best guess 4.8 million years ago um, it's known by research by the Arizona Geological Survey. But let's see how the calculations work with just a nice rounded number of 5 million years ago. 5 million years ago is the same thing as written 5000000. Actually, the same thing as 5,000 millennia or thousands of years. We abbreviate thousands of years KA for kilo annum. That's the same thing as 50,000 centuries. They're all the same thing. So, what do we do with this information? We need the elevation difference between the top and the bottom. The top of the Grand Canyon on the south rim of 2131 minus 721 You can see that if you subtract 21 from 31, you have 10. If you subtract seven from 21, it's 14. So the elevation difference between the North Rim, I'm sorry, between the South Rim and the bottom of the Grand Canyon is 1,410 meters. You can use a calculator. There's no reason why you need to be able to do this in your head. And I'll go ahead and use a Google calculator right now. So let's pretend you are asked the question, how fast has the incision rate been from the south rim down to the bottom of the Grand Canyon if it took 5,000 millennia or 5,000 thousand years? How would you calculate this out? Well, in the instructions to the question, you're told the units that you need to be using. So let's say the units are, are your asked for is meters per thousand years. To figure out meters per thousand years, you would take the meter incision of 1410 meters and you would divide that by 5,000 Ka, or 1,000 years. Just look at that number for a second. Think about it. Use the mental math in your head. 
1410 meters is somewhere in between a quarter of 5,000. And so a one quarter of 5,000 is 1250. If you were to take 1250 and 1250, that would be 2,500. And if you were to take another 1250 and 1250, that would be another 2,500, that would be 5,000. So just in your mind, 1410 is about one quarter of 5,000. So you know by just looking at it that the answer should be somewhere in the neighborhood and the ballpark of 0 0.25 or one quarter of a meter per thousand years. It should be a little bit more than that. You can see that 14, if, if uh, let's look at it another way. I hope you can see that 2,500 is half of 5,000. So if you had 2,500 divided by 5,000, the answer would be 0.5. So in your mind, I hope you're being able to see that the correct answer is somewhere between 0.25 and a half of a meter per thousand years. That's exactly the purpose of me going through this video with you is so that you can see these relationships in your mind so you know that the calculations you're doing are sort of ballpark and on target. Let's go do the same thing again for the north rim. Oops, I'm going to try and insert a page break. So let's take 2611, which is the north rim elevation, minus 721 to figure out the elevation difference between the north rim and the south rim. The first digit has to be a zero. So you're going to have to borrow here. Let's try old fashioned math. Because one is less than two, you know the answer is going to be a nine. And you've borrowed one of the sixes here. So you have 111 minus 21, which is 90. And now you have 25 minus 7, which is 18. You can use a calculator. So we have an elevation difference of 1890 between the north rim and the south rim. And if I made a mistake and it's pretty close, that's just fine for doing this back of napkin calculation. So let's take the elevation difference of 1890 and let's do the same thing. 1890 meters of an elevation drop divided by 5,000, what's the rate of incision? I hope you can see that the rate of deepening from the north rim is a little bit more. So let's say 1890 is close to 2,000 divided by 5,000. That is 0 0.4, right? 20 divided by 50 or two divided by five is the same thing as 2,000 divided by 5,000. That's 0.4 meters per thousand years. It's Therefore, the correct answer is going to be just a little bit less than 
0.4 meters per thousand years. Hope this makes sense. I'm going to stop this presentation right now and make a part two because I don't want this to be too long.